Hello again. There is heartening news this morning from the Equality and Human Rights Commission. And there is a sentence that few of us <laughs> ever have cause to construct. Usually nothing but racially divisive foolishness comes from this body. However, they have announced now that women-only spaces, such as changing rooms, lavatories and refuges for the victims of abuse, are actually quite lawful and indeed desirable. At last. The whole of the present fuss about such matters stems from the mistaken idea that those who are born as males can change their gender identity and should then be treated in exactly the same way as women who were born female. This is not so, and in accepting this, the Commission is really only exercising common sense and acknowledging the situation as it really exists. There are real and obvious differences between women and men who wish to be perceived as women. One obvious difference, and it is one which nobody really talks about, is that the idea of what makes somebody a woman is very different for women and men. Men often draw their ideas about women from uh, dubious sources and they have a, a, a strange idea of what constitutes femaleness. Men who wish to change sex usually have that male idea of femaleness upon which they draw and it's taken from magazines and television programmes rather than from association with real women. For many such people, clothes, makeup, large breasts and a pretty face are what constitutes the essence of a woman. For real women, the case is quite different. What sums up and defines real women? Is it having perfect hair and being wonderfully groomed? It is not. Not most women, anyway unless they happen to be the wives of uh, footballers or fashion models or film stars or something of that sort. For ordinary women, it is things like having to use a vacuum cleaner before going to work. It is having their hair smell of sick because a baby has thrown up while being fed. It's racing to attend a child's school play while making sure that the shopping is done or trying to make the house look presentable while also holding down the job and making sure that the children's homework is done. These are things which trans women never seem to think about. They are usually too busy ensuring that their makeup is just right. The idea that running a home, looking after a husband and raising children while also working part-time is the real experience of women never seems to enter their minds. This is why trans women spend more time with other men who have, or are planning to, change sex. The interests and preoccupations of trans women are usually very different from women. Part of this is that many trans women are autogynophiles. This is a fancy word which really just means that they get off on the idea of being female. It is an end in itself for most of them, and showing off their bodies is a big deal for a lot of um, trans women. In this, they differ greatly from those who are born female. These people may not be wholly male, but then again, neither are they wholly and fully female. Perhaps the best way of viewing them is as a third gender, as is done in India, for example, with the hegira. These are eunuchs who uh, wear women's clothing. They're some thousands of them in India, they are regarded as being neither women nor men. Other cultures, both modern and ancient, had a similar category for such in intermediate cases. I give a link to a bit about this in the description to this video. I have an idea that it is of a status of this kind that the Equality and Human Rights Commission is now thinking, for they recommend gender-neutral spaces and facilities not instead of, but in addition to those for men and women. I quite see that a male who is now living as a female would not wish to use male facilities, but I should think that gender-neutral places would be better, 
The truth is that some women in women's changing rooms have been made uncomfortable by being forced to share the space with people who walk about with their penises showing. Assuming that this is not a peculiar form of ex exhibitionism, then gender-neutral places would surely be a better solution. I must mention, and not for the first time, that I have no strong feelings about this subject, certainly no animosity towards transsexuals. I do believe, though, that women have the right to privacy in their own spaces. I certainly sympathise with men who find themselves in a predicament of this sort, but we must also remember that all the fuss is about biological males using women's facilities. Does anybody ever ask themselves why we do not hear anything about biological women using male facilities? It is, of course, because such people are a little more reserved and discreet and do not make a fetish of displaying their bodies to others.